Good YouTube, Quinway coming to y'all with that basketball analysis on analysisplayground.com and on YouTube. We're going to talk about what to expect from the Toronto Raptors. This was a team that offloaded a lot of talent. No more Van Fleet, no more Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent Jr. and those guys are all gone. And this is a team that has won 25 games and 57 losses last year. And they ended their season with a four-game losing streak. And it is a team that's not going to be good this year either. But it's going to be intriguing things to watch. Player development. Seeing what this team has in store for potentially the future. And just trying to stay positive as you can get. Since they lost some young talent too that you thought that they would try to keep a little longer. But they know what they're trying to accomplish. They know what they're trying to do because Masai always does. It's just the long-term vision is always going to be a little blurry because injuries happen. Sometimes guys don't be what you think they're going to be. And sometimes players don't turn out to what you think they're going to be. And on top of that, players sometimes don't play well when they don't have another star to play off of. And we're going to see what these guys are really made of, just like last year. And we're going to see if they can even fit R.J. Barrett in with Scotty Barnes. Some people like what R.J. Barrett did last year. Obviously, he averaged 20 points a game, something that he did before um, with the New York Knicks. His efficiency was decent. He was playing a bigger role and closer to the basket, which he has always been a finisher um, over a guy that can make shots from the perimeter. And he shot 55% and 39% from three. It got his confidence up. He really felt like he was comfortable. He was playing the best he has ever played, which is something that you want to hear. From. But I feel like R.J. Berry has a cap and a limit to how good he can be. And obviously, he hit that limit already with the Raptors. And we know how it looks and we know how he plays, you know, around guys like Scotty Barnes, who – it's 23 years old, and he's already showing you that he can be a two-way versatile player, getting rebounds, getting assists, mid-post, high post, um, cutting to the basket, getting drop dump offs, getting deep catches, um, quick decisions uh, when he gets the ball, whether it's a layup or whether it's just going straight up for a shot. He got the fundamentals of the game right, and now he just got to continue to show that he can potentially have a jump shot, even if it's from the three-point line. Um, I like Scotty Barnes' potential. That's why they drafted him so high, and he was so um, critically acclaimed um, in the draft just because he has so much upside and he has the physical tools to really be a monster. And I feel like he can still do that, and he showed that averaging 19 points with the assists and the rebounds and still showing you that he has a lot of upside defensively. So that's going to be an interesting player um, and the fact that he's already an all-star at 22, I think that that was something that was really nice to see. Um, Ochi Ibaji, I don't think he's going to get a crazy amount of playing time because of the guard position that he plays at. And by him not being a great shooter either, I think that that is going to hurt his chances of getting a major amount of minutes unless he comes in and shows improvement in that area and, or he shows a little bit more consistency in that area. Um, I think that he's not going to play too much, and I don't really see him having a crazy NBA career. Um, a guy like Chris Boucher, he's getting older, but he's one of their very best rim protectors and ability to stretch the floor as a big. He's one of the only players that can do that at, at on this team and on this roster with that type of length and with that type of size. And I think that they're going to continue to use him as much as they can because there's no real point because he's under a good contract for what he brings to the table. We knew that when he signed it, and I think he's just going to play out that contract in general because he's a likable guy too. Plus, you know, you don't really have nothing, no reason not to bring him back. He's not going to help you win too many more games, which, you know, the reason why they won 25 games last year. Bruce Brown, I understand that he was a good pickup at the time. They were still trying to compete for a playoff spot or a play-in spot, and that could possibly lead to a playoff spot. So Bruce Brown was one of the best guards that they can pick up at the time. He's a guy that shouldn't be on this roster that long, 
because they're going younger now and they're tearing down their roster. And I could see a guy like him leaving too, which makes sense. But he's coming off surgery. He hasn't really played too well compared to what he was doing before. And the injuries could be a reason why. But we know that Bruce Brown is a mid, a midi type of guy. He's going to make mid-range. He's going to make floaters. He's going to make some threes when he's open, not a bunch of them. And he can handle the ball just enough to get his shot off. And he's still a solid player. So I can see him still having a, a great career even after he leaves Toronto. Guys like Jameson Battle and Brandon Carson and Jared Roden, um, they're not – guaranteed to continue to stay on this roster even in the future they're going to be some of the most cuttable players on the roster um you can also put um there's the center that's 18 years old um i would say ilrich he's a guy that won't be playing that much either and he's not going to have a huge opportunity to make a difference on this roster that's because they feel like he's an interesting player and he he's a guy that they want to be able to build something first before they end it end up giving him more opportunity same with jared same with um brandon same with a guy named jameson they're not going to really be on a roster guarantee and it's unfortunate but at least they got picked up at least they have opportunity at least they have a chance to try to make the nba dream come true you can say the same thing about dj carlton um he's another guy that's um, under a contract where they're going to look at it, they're going to evaluate it, they're going to see what he brings to the table first, then they give him more of a guaranteed deal if he passed those tests. Um, I feel like he's not, you know, the greatest guy, not the greatest athlete, same with some of the other guys I mentioned. And I think that that's why they're going to just keep him around just to fill the roster, just to try him out. Then they're going to go for gold in the draft next year and try to get somebody that they really like or they're going to just try to get that a guy called up from Summer League or the G League and try to go in a different direction because that's what usually will happen with guys under these type of contracts. Grady Dick, um, I, I see him being solid. He's a, he's a guy that can shoot the basketball. He's a guy that can really come off screens and make plays. Um, he's not really good at it. He's not really consistent at it, but he's showing that. He, he's confident enough to let that thing fly and let that thing go out of his hands. And that's all you need to have to be able to be a shot maker. Uh, we're going to see what else he's going to be able to do this year. Um, he, he, is a, he is a really player, intriguing player to see what he's going to bring to the table and what he's going to do um, for this roster outside of shooting. Can he play make a little bit? Can he – you know, get to the basket a little bit, can get to the free throw, line, free throw line a little bit. I think it's all going to be interesting with that guy, um, Grady Dick. Bruno Fernando, he's been a guy that's been in and out the league. Um, he's long, he's tall, he's fast, he's quick. Um, he's a penetrator, but I don't really think that he's going to get too many minutes on this team, even though this team ain't really trying to win. But they have guys ahead of him that is more – you know, interesting or more better or even need to show more development than he is. He's more of a let's be eighth or ninth off the roster. You're going to play. You're going to get an opportunity, but you're not going to get too much of a chance, you know, like you did before. And it's all because of the way he played and the way he chose, you know, to continue to go out there and perform is the reason why his contract and his opportunity is going to be cut a little bit more short. Davion Mitchell. He's an NBA player. He can defend. He can stay in front of guys. Um, he can make some type of shots. The reason why they gave up on him because he's not the best scorer. Um, and his defense hasn't really been locked up like they have said. Um, so off night was his nickname. He wasn't that great of a defender. He didn't play that great defensively. Um, and then you look at the fact that offensively he didn't play great or perform well either showing you that we don't really know what he's going to do, what he's going to be, what he's going to be able to accomplish at the NBA level. But at least we know he's going to compete and he's going to try his hardest to give it his all each and every night and effort and energy you can't really teach. Either they want to do it or they don't. And I think Davion is still going to make a name for himself because of that reason. Um, Jonathan and um, uh, Garrett Temple and J J Club. Jacoby Walter, those are guys that's going to get 
you know, the ninth, tenth, eleven spots. They're not going to play unless an injury happened or, you know, they have a chance to make that type of impact. I don't think it's going to happen this year. And those are guys that might come a, a little longer, you know, once they start figuring out who they really want to build around and what they really want to do with this roster. I think that's when they're going to get the uptick in minutes and uptick in opportunity. And I don't really think that that's going to happen right away, um, even this year, maybe two years from now. And I don't even know if they'll be on the roster two years from now, but they might get played for other teams, but not on this particular team. Kelly Olenek, he, he, he looks – Younger, but he's actually an older veteran. He gives the team floor spacing, a post option, um, a guy that can knock down free throws too, a great screen setter to allow guys to get open and get allow guys to get easier shots. Think that he's needed for a team like this because of his fundamentals and the things that he opens up for this team. So I think that he's needed. Jakob Pertle. Um, he's a rim protector and a rebounder. It makes the defensive side easier for the guys that's on his roster. I think that he's going to be a guy that I can see him leaving to another team eventually because he has good trade value and a decent contract that I can see another team willing to take. Um, Emmanuel quickly is one of their building blocks right now. Um, he's 25 years old. He can score. He can get to the basket. He's a solid three-point shooter. That turned into above average one, and we're going to see if he can continue to keep that up as season to season. You know, he showed that he can come off the screens, come off his his own handle, and get to his spot, get to his shots, and create his own baskets. And he can facilitate if he keeps his head up and be able to see what the defense is trying to do. And he can take advantage of that. Um, Jamal, she, he's not going to play that much or get that much opportunity but I can see him being a guy that he possibly can, you know, two to three years from now, he can be a big, you know, part of this team. If he can hit the mid range, if he can set guys up, if he can defend at the position and if he can get to the rim and he can make his free throws. And, you know, Gary Temple is the, the last guy that he, we know what he does. We know he brings to the table. We know what he can do. He can space the floor. He can stay out the way. He can be a great locker room presence. And they're going to need some veteran leadership, which they have on this roster. Some of these guys have already been winning. Some of these guys have already contributed to winning teams. Some of this, these guys had that the years before because they had some championship players from the last team that won one in 2019 on this roster before the roster turned into how it is now. And I think that what to expect from this team, this is going to be a bottom feeder in the Eastern Conference. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They're not going to be a playing tournament, but it's all about developing Scotty Barnes and R.J. Barrett and building up trade value, building up guys to be the next big thing and setting themselves up to also get a high-level draft pick that they can bring in and continue to build around Scotty Barnes with. And I think that this draft coming up has multiple guys that you can pair with Scotty and other guys on this roster and be confident that you can turn it around quicker than you think. But that's always the goal. That's always the hope. That's always the idea that you're trying to execute. But it, the side show that he can do it before, he's showing that they have great scouts. And it's just about getting a guy that really wants to play hard and wants to win and has anything in his path that's more important than that is, is what you don't want. You want a guy that's dedicated to this life, to style, devoted to the play and the lifestyle of the basketball you know, game that it brings. And that's what you need for the most part. Other than that, comment, like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell for more analysis on um, this channel. And if you're new to the channel, check out my older videos if you've been on the channel for a while and you may miss some videos here and there. It's still important to still check out my channel and see those videos that you might miss and watch because, you know, that's my a good idea to help you out if you love the content as much as I love making it. And most of you guys do. And all I can ask you to do is continue to like and share so that this channel can be more popular and be more bigger. I think that that's all I can ask you guys to do. And you guys have been doing a great job of that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Thanks for continuing to support the channel any way that you can. Quinn Wade coming to you all with that analysis. I'm signing out.